Get the recording started. All right. Okay, it's 707, November 21st, 2022, City Hall, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Time to call the City of Torrington in the Wetlands Commission meeting to order. Serving on the commission this evening are members Emily Jury, Thomas Kalinowski, myself, Jay Bate. Also present is Nate Nardi Cyrus, Inland Wetlands Enforcement Officer and Assistant City Plan. So, because Christine's not here yet, what we'll do is we'll go to, I guess, the staff report. We could mm -hmm. go through the staff report. And the first one is uh, what, enforcement. Or you want to do? Yeah, I can do the enforcement, enforcement? report first. Okay. So, um, the only major action we have right now is at 137 Babbling Brook Road. Um, we have uh, an applicant that's uh, we we have uh, discovered through zoning um, a, a violation, um, which includes piping a stream um, without the proper permits and some draining of wetlands in the backyard. So right now they're preparing their um, their plans for that, and we'll be likely submitting for the next meeting. Um, and they've been very cooperative, um, trying to you know figure out. A plan for moving forward. So that's something that will be coming before the commission, hopefully next meeting, if not at the very latest, uh, the January meeting. Um, I've also been uh, doing site visits for the Conservation Commission, uh, checking in on um, city owned properties and doing assessments of them. And in the process of that, have discovered numerous wetlands violations. So mm -hmm. um, I'm in the process of preparing notices of violation and, and trying to. Um, bring some of those folks before the commission um, to get their their necessary permitting. So um, that's that. Those are my updates for the enforcement report. Um, we only had. Oh, I'll let you move okay. on to this point. The next would be agent determinations. Uh, so we had one agent determination. Um, uh, one five six five one five seven one. Uh, uh, East Main Street was a proposal for uh, parking and shed in the Upland Review area for a business for the Borghese company, um, but they actually withdrew that application from PNZ. So, um, you know, the permit stands, but the, that project won't be moving forward. Okay, and next, I guess, is the CACIWC -C conference updates. Yep, so the CACIWIC conference was at the end of October. Um, both myself and Emily Jury attended that. Um, and, you know, there were numerous case law presentations and uh, celebration of the anniversary of the Inland Wetlands Act. Um, so uh, I know I enjoyed it quite a bit. Emily, I don't know if you had any uh, comments on the, the conference. I know Tom attended last year. Yeah, it was great. It felt it was informative and I, I really enjoyed the sessions I attend. I attended. Yep. So next year, you know, every year we have money um, through the city to send commissioners to um, this training. It's generally on a Saturday, uh, you know, meals included and uh, a lot of inland wetland staff and commissioners. Uh, so uh, highly recommend for those if you want to attend uh, next next go around. Okay, well, I guess we'll just either <laughs> Christine hasn't gotten here or she's having trouble getting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan? Yeah, we're waiting for one more member. Oh, for a quorum? Oh. <laughs> what is this in inland wetlands? Yeah.
Sorry. That's okay. We just went through the uh, agent determinations. And okay. We'll get to there if you want. All right. So now we have a quorum. And Christine Altman has arrived, so we can move on to minutes for approval for the 10 18 22 meeting. And I have a motion to approve. Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't on mute. Um, I move that we approve the minutes from the October 18, 2022 City of Torrington Inland Wetlands Commission. I second. Yeah. Motion and seconded by, I guess, Christine. All in favor? Uh, okay, that was uh, Emily. Yes. Yes, sorry. Okay, Christine. Aye. Tom. Aye. Myself. Myself, I motion carries. Okay, next is old business applicant Haynes Aggregate Torrington LLC, location 3217 Winstead Road and Winstead Road must be lot 242 slash 001 slash 017. Activity unintended discharge of pollutants into Still River Wetlands. And I take it nothing's changed. From the last meeting? Uh, no, for the record, Kenneth Ricca, nothing has changed on the plans. Okay. Any questions or concerns by the commission? No. No? No. Okay. no. Can I have a motion? I move that we grant the application for Haynes Aggregate Torrington LLC, 3217 Winston Road and Winston Road 242-001-017 for unintended discharge of pollutants into Still River Wetlands. The motion, can I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Christine is aye. aye. Emily, aye. Tom? Aye. Myself, aye. Motion carries. Well, that's it for that. Thank you very much, folks. Have a good night. Okay. You too. Bye, Ken. Okay, next is new business. Applicant Leela Campo, location 232 Plug Hill Road, assessor map 215, block 003, lots 004 and 016. Activity construction of septic leaching fields, stormwater management basins, and associated grading and infrastructure within regulated areas. Okay. Ready for me? Yeah, I'm ready for okay. you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Ryan McAvoy. I'm a licensed professional engineer with SLR, and I'm here on behalf of the applicant for the uh, application in front of you tonight. And I assure you I'm not angry. <laughs> it's just the shadows on my face look, uh, look like I am because the lighting's awkward in my dining room. Uh, <laughs> So uh, thank you for having us this evening. I appreciate the fact that you were able to schedule a special meeting to uh, to consider this at least uh, initially. Our application is at 232 Clug Hill Road on a 226 acre property. Um, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to share my screen. Sure. Thank you. So let me know when you can see it. It's up there. Okay. Okay. So this uh, th this sheet in front of you is our index plan that shows the general vicinity of where we're proposing uh, site improvements. Uh, again, this property is very large, 226 acres in size. Orientation on this particular map is north being up, more or less. Uh, Clug Hill Road on the east side of the property is where the site takes frontage. It does have frontage along Goshen uh, Goshen Road, Route Four and Weed Road to the west, um, although we won't be, uh, that's not the subject of our application, either Goshen Road or Weed Road. Um, surrounding property uses include residential properties along Goshen Road, um, a few handful up here, uh, another handful on the west along Weed Road, one uh, single family residential house along Clug Hill Road, and then to the south and east are, uh, farms agricultural use and this property itself uh, contains a single family residential home today 
and uh, portions of the property are used for agricultural purposes. Um, in terms of where our site is located or where we're proposing activities, they're primarily located along a ridge line that exists throughout the central portion of the site. Um, to the west is a larger wetland corridor. To the east are sort of sporadic wetland corridors along agricultural land, that's the southeast. And to the northeast, there's a large wooded wetland area that uh, drains to the north towards Goshen Road. Uh, you may recall um, back in July, June and July of this year, we did uh, 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 gain approval from this commission for regulated activities associated with the access road that was coming in off Clug Hill Road. You may recall that we were widening, grading, uh, and adding a secondary uh, driveway access onto Clug Hill Road. Um, the reason why we separated this into two applications was, was um, first because we knew we were going to have regulated activities associated with the driveway, uh, and we wanted to ensure that those regulated activities would be approved. And the second is because we had not yet fully designed the RV site, uh, and we didn't really um, at the time know the extent of the regulated activities that would be uh, needed to support the development at the time. So uh, in general, what we're looking to do is kind of picking up where we left off. So uh, if you can follow my cursor, um, this is where the driveway widening, regrading, et cetera, was approved earlier in this year. And we're continuing with driveway widening, reconstruction, and minor relocation past the existing house located, again, underneath the phase one where my cursor is, and then entering into a check-in area near some of the existing barn structures in the property, which will be repurposed for office space, recreational space, and a small little cafe uh, to be used by the guests for this particular uh, campsite. And further to the north, we are starting to branch off into uh, RV sites. Uh, one little, uh, we'll call it a village or cluster to the east, and then as you continue to the north, uh, larger clusters of RV sites. Again, these are all RV sites. Um, and then uh, again, further a larger cluster to the north and west. These RV sites will be accessed primarily by gravel driveways. Um, the intent of the developer of Leela, the applicant, is to have this be as low key as possible with respect to infrastructure. Um, we do propose the main driveway to be paved coming up the hill, but that's about it. The remainder of the site will all be uh, gravel uh, driveways, uh, gravel parking, gravel um, campsite locations itself where the RVs will park, and then some internal features such as a roundabout, again, all gravel, um, an attempt to keep it as, I suppose, as rustic as possible. Uh, and in terms of the RV sites themselves, I'm going to continue along here um, to our grading and utility plans. So there will be some grading associated with our driveway uh, widening and, and, and relocation. Um, the areas where the RV sites are proposed are to be padded out, so there will be some uh, grading needed to make those as level as possible. Again, being an RV site, you know, we're trying to keep the areas particularly where the vehicles are going to park to be as flat as possible for obvious reasons. Um, however, our access drives are relatively uh, gentle and grade, really not exceeding 5% once you get to the gravel portions of the site. And every RV site will be serviced by a water spigot and a, um, a sanitary sewer uh, a discharge so that they can use their um, facilities and their recreational vehicles and tie into uh, sort of common septic systems on the property. Um, in terms of septic systems, we have four designated septic areas for the RV sites, one shown here in the upper right portion of the site, another one to the top center portion, and then two further to the west. Uh, these will be dedicated septic systems for the RV sites themselves, and there will be two separate leaching fields uh, as I head south again towards the um, proposed, uh, well, the existing barns and, and horse stables that will be converted into 
uh, recreational buildings, cafes, and office space. The existing house and existing leaching field that supports the house will remain. Um, and because we are proposing uh, changes in site coverage from primarily wooded uh, to uh, gravel, um, gravel access, gravel parking areas for the RVs, we will have increases in stormwater runoff. And the way we're uh, handling that increase is to direct these improved areas to stormwater management basins. These stormwater management basins are sized to provide water quality volume and also to ensure that there's no increases in the rate of rate of runoff for up to the 100 year storm, all uh, designed in accordance with uh, town and state guidelines. Um, in terms of regulated activities, uh, the uh, installation of a portion of the septic system, the stormwater management pond to the north, and again, a portion of the septic system in the northwest corner of the site uh, will be located uh, partially within the 75 foot upland, 75 foot upland review area. And in this particular area, that totals about 25,000 square feet, plus or minus. And then moving to the south, we do have some regulated activities associated with two of our stormwater basins and their discharges, which are located within the upland review area. Uh, again, this area totals about 14,000 and change, or almost 15,000 square feet of activity within the upland review area. Um, we do propose a fair amount of grading on site, and as a result, we do have to provide for uh, sediment erosion control measures, which are designed in accordance with the 2002 guideline for sediment and erosion control at the state level, and also done in accordance with your uh, wetland and zoning regulations. Um, so in, in summary, most of our improvements are located outside or well outside of any upland review areas. We do have some uh, small areas of improvement, drainage, and some septic areas within the upland review area, but no direct wetland impacts. Um, we have received uh, correspondence from your staff at the planning office regarding their opinion about the significance of our proposed activities. And we also did receive some comments from the engineering, engineering department uh, with some questions regarding the uh, primarily the stormwater design and, 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 and uh, some questions he had regarding that. But um, we believe we can address all those comments without increasing any regulated activities. Uh, and we also um, uh, are in, in, in agreement with the findings or the opinion of your assistant city planner and wetlands agent. So uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time. I, I, I'd prefer to answer any questions that you may have regarding this application or uh, any questions uh, um, yeah, about the application in general. What, so. what was boundaries that's what i'm trying to find that's the gray okay yeah it's the gray line here okay that's a good great question yeah yeah so wetlands are the gray line the upland review area is the black dashed line that is um uh, 75 feet line. so you can use that to kind of identify okay. where those are what are the engineers opinions about being in the uh, upland review area with the septics um they had uh a city engineer um paul cudson's had um a few comments uh about you know about the drainage and and um and sanitary facilities i know one of them was about the crossing of those two and the potential for contamination with crossing mm. stormwater and um uh sanitary do you have any yeah. comments on that i mean that's just something i don't know about yeah. either I, I think what he what he suggested and there are some areas where we have sewer and stormwater pipes crossing which happens you know kind of frequently in site design sewer laterals often cross uh storm drainage I, I think in this case what he's concerned about is when storm drainage is actually constructed below the sewer uh and, and in cases like that the sanitary sewer pipe itself is constructed using rubber gasketed joints to prevent any uh leakage outside those pipes we can do the same for the storm drainage pipes um and uh it's pretty it's pretty standard to uh request that storm drain pipes be included with uh, rubber gasketed joints so that there be no um essentially they're watertight um so that's something we can certainly uh, incorporate into any cases where a storm drain pipe is constructed below a sewer pipe but um in terms of the septic systems themselves we have gotten um uh, feasibility approval from torrington area health district for the size and location of our septic systems. They have seen 
the proximity of these to uh, wetland areas. And in general, the health code, the Connecticut Public Health Code, which is the governing regulation for this particular site for septic, um, allows for a septic system to be as close as 50 feet to a water course. It is silent on, on wetlands. Uh, and we have maintained a minimum of 50 feet anywhere from any portion of our septic systems to any sort of wetland areas. So the health code would allow you to be 50 feet away from, say, a pond or a river or a stream. Uh, and we're, we're exceeding that for, for wetland areas and, and, of course, water courses as well. I, I just have a quick question. Is any portion of the, I guess, um, if there's any, to the extent there's any ponds or anything of that nature on the property, are any of them going to be used in a recreational manner? Uh, not at not at this time. Although although as this property develops, I'm, I'm sure it's possible at some point that um, Leela and the uh, you know the folks who are going to run the campsite you know may wish to uh, pursue recreational activities at some ponds. Though that that hasn't been that hasn't been um, formalized yet. So any activity along those lines would have to come before this agency, of course, and uh, and also may may need may need state and federal permits depending on the nature of the activity. But um, for the application in front of you, we are not proposing any um, hard improvements to any ponds on the site. Thank you. Another question I had about um, getting back to the city engineer's comments. Uh, he brought up the, uh, that there weren't any access roads shown to maintain the, the that infrastructure. Um, I assume it's likely that any access roads would be outside of the regulated area if they were added or if you intend on adding them. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, I mentioned before. I don't think any of his comments would result in any um, any additional regulated activities beyond what we're asking for right now. Where's the trash going to be stored? Uh, there, there are uh, up by the. Um, we're referring to this as a recreational building. Um, there, there's likely to be a dumpster near this building. We don't show it on these plans. However, um, this is this area and the office space, which is going to be this building, little cafe right here. Uh, these areas are hundreds of feet from any any nearby wetlands or water courses. So there'd be nothing anywhere anywhere in close proximity whatsoever to uh, wetlands. Can you point it on your map? I missed it. So, the so in the center of the site in the ridge line, you have a couple existing barns and horse stables in the property. Mm -hmm. And the wetlands, uh, this is this is going to be sort of the, I guess the commercial hub of the RV site as you enter in, there'll be a, likely a pool, a uh, small little cafe where you can get like breakfast sandwiches or whatever, office space. <laughs> Um, video game locations, things like that. And at the end of this parking lot, we're likely going to have some form of uh, uh, receptacles for, for trash. And wetlands are located to the west, hundreds of feet away. Okay. That's good. People in the RVs will be bringing their trash to the receptacles, or will some some campgrounds kind of have like a trash service? Um, I, I I'm I'm not honestly sure the answer to that question. That would be a question more for the um, folks that are going to operate the site. But uh, in general, um, you know they they they'll have a lo central location where trash can be brought. I don't know if they're going to be going around doing individual trash pickups or not. To be honest okay. with you. Okay. I guess it depends how much they're willing to pay <laughs> the, the guests. <laughs> I mean, I've been to campsites where they put all those barrels out and then the animals knock them over every night. Oh, they're very, they're, they are very concerned. Uh, they do have a, um, a campground in Litchfield called Cozy Hills. Um, and, uh, you know, wildlife, they're very concerned about, um, particularly bears <laughs> amongst mm -hmm. other, you know, animals. Um, so I, I, I believe that they're very, cautious about how they handle um, garbage on site mm -hmm. for that reason. Okay. They could probably tell you some stories. 
<laughs> and I will say for the record that uh, I visited the site today um, and looked at those wetlands that would be, or the, the areas where those improvements would be within the Upland Review area. Um, and uh, it was all flagged out there. They have the limits of clearing flagged yeah. for the clearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it seemed like there's, yeah, it's very, it's quite a distance away, as you can oh, see, okay. from, well, from all the wetlands, at least the the, the majority of the of the intensive activity. Um, yeah, I, I is, would I, I would offer this, Nate, not that not, this wasn't meant to necessarily confuse you, but uh, you may recall that we did get a grading permit um, uh, from staff uh, for some site clearing that was done well outside of any upland review areas. Um, so some of the areas shown where we had clearing limits was uh, uh, was more for that grading permit that the, that the applicants received, um, not necessarily reflective of the final clearing limits that we're seeking as part of this. It was it was actually a pretty easy site to navigate because of those stone walls, like the yes. second phase is yes. pretty much contained within an, a former pasture, um, yes. and and that's shown well on the map. So I mean the the limits of clearing are you know, pretty obvious where they're around that stone wall, but I did see at least in the north part, that septic, that leach field area, that looks like the limits of clearing on that were denoted with with orange flagging as well. So I guess some of the larger, some of those areas that the, they'll be clear, clearing as a part of the grading permit that go out toward the infrastructure. Um, yes, yeah, so, some areas, but we made sure uh, not to not to include any, any uh, regulated activity clearing because we had not yet gotten approval from this commission yet. So, okay. so yeah. that, that was, that was, that, that I, I just want to make sure that sort of uh, what you were looking at when you're out there was, is, is sort of, sort of clear relative to what we're proposing right now. No, that makes a lot of sense to me given, I mean, like I said, I was looking at that, that area in the north. Um, yeah, around there with yeah. the stone wall and you can see the wetland flags were all clearly very visible. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense that, you know, the area for clearing was, um, wasn't the entirety of uh, where the infrastructure is going to go in. So no, that, that makes exactly. sense based on what I saw. Okay. As a point of a note uh, for the for the commission, that northern kind of wetland area yeah. that um, that it's really just a giant seepy hillside. Uh, you can see the the topo lines are really squiggly. Yeah. So it's just that whole hill essentially is just wet all the way um, pr pretty far down toward Goshen Road there. Um, it's pretty impressive uh, size wetland of seep there. It's it's a large forested. Yeah, it's a large forested wetland that really uh, is just based on, uh, I guess you could call it um, poorly draining soils fairly close to the surface. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really uh, look like a like a a typical wetland. It looks like a wooded area. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it'll mess up the spring up there. Where where's the spring located? As you turn on Clug Hill Road mm -hmm. um, off of uh, route what is that route four? It's yep. maybe a hundred feet up the road on the right. There it's blocked off now. I think they covered it in a little hut or something. Okay. Little, it's like a chicken coop, but that, mm -hmm. that used to be a spring. On Route 4? Yeah. No, on, no, on, on Clark Hill. Hill. Oh, on Clark Hill, yeah. when you turn yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. That might be this little this little, uh, this little oh, guy right here. Yeah, yeah that could, could be it right there. So, yeah, that, that's at the toe of the slope where, you know, all this, these, mm -hmm. this whole site eventually drains to. You know, it all eventually collects at this um, in the northeast corner, at least this side of the ridgeline. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. I guess we're just accepting. Okay, so I move that we accept the application for Lila Campo, 232 Clug Hill Road, assessor map 215, block 003, lots 004 and 016 for construction of septic leaching fields, stormwater management basins, and associated grading and infrastructure within the regulated area. Um, what do we think about significant activity? I don't really think it is. Okay. Not a significant yeah. activity. Okay, can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 
Okay. I. Christine was I, Emily was I, Thomas was I, and I'm an I. The motion carries. Thank you very much. We'll see you Hi. in December, hopefully. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Nate. Yep. Okay, next, I think we covered mm -hmm. the staff report. And the only thing that you might be interested in is that uh, Babbling Brook. Oh, tell me about Babbling Brook. That's the only thing. You yeah, might be I'll just in, that um, recap that while you're here. Yeah, the the landowner that um, where we discovered that violation, um, he's working with uh, wetland scientist George Logan, who has mm -hmm. uh, worked on that Torringford um, that Torringford site. We just looked mm -hmm. at doing the yeah. restoration there. Yeah. So he's on the case. Um, and he's currently uh, kind of designing a plan for mitigation for um, piping the stream under his lawn and draining. So he 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 took the stream, piped it, drained a lot of the wet areas, put a lawn over the top of it, put riprap to kind of stabilize the inlet and the outlet, and then um, I guess he was doing some other filling kind of in that in the, in the wetlands that were around that area. So um, so there's George, like I said. George Logan is putting together kind of working okay. with him to put together a plan for for restoration of that site to bring before the commission. So we we did charge him the full violator's fee for that application, mm -hmm. which is, you know, 700 something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so he should be coming before the commission uh, in December at the very latest January. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, I guess the only thing left is adjournment. I'll move we adjourn. A motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, myself, aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Next